The Mi 24P is late 70s to mid 80s model. The Black Shark's development effectively stopped early 90s. And the Apache will be mid to late 2010s. So we'll have three attack helos about 5 to 18 years apart, depending on how you look at it. Each with different nuances and doing a similar role. Now while the Apache will be the latest and most advanced in the line of DCS helicopters, that doesn't mean you can't apply techniques you've learned from the other helicopters on your Apache. Even the late 60s Huey has lessons to teach beyond how to use the pedals and trim. Rockets you'll use pretty much the same as the Hydras on the Huey and the Soviet S8 rockets. Slight differences in size and construction, but you'll experience them to be very similar. You run in, ensure you have enough time, maybe not too shallow, and fire. Don't assume you're going to hit a barn door, or that they'll be tank killers. And if you're dealing with short range AAA, break away early and assume it's not destroyed. Or stay safe and just use a missile instead. The 17 pounders do look fun to use. Now the interface for delivering the rockets does look a bit more complicated than the Heinz flying pepper on target and wait for the range cue. Or the Shark's helmet on target, range, fly to line up the two circles and fire with it calculating side slip. But I guess you'll get used to it with practice. And it does allow rocketing without pitching out of your hover, like you see here. We'll have to see how useful that is, and there isn't an equivalent for that in the other helos at the moment. So that's a new technique, new feature. Now the chain gun and rounds and fires are much smaller than the rate of fire monster of the hind or the sniper cannon of the black shark. I've got a video breaking down some of the technical details on these weapons, but let's just say a 30 mil ain't a 30 mil by a large margin. But it can fire sideways, so it's somewhere between the hind or shark's cannons and the door gunners of the Huey and Hip. Infantry fighting vehicles and light skin targets are on the menu, but not tanks. Against low threats like AK dudes, fly however you want. Well, sorta. See the spaceship door is almost 5 cm thick plexiglass. AK dude can still mess up your helo. See this one canopy? Yeah. There are other examples of what's protected and gets more tricky, but do the math. While you have the redundancies, self-sealing fuel tanks, etc. like the Hind and Shark, you're not a chunky Soviet heavy. Depending on how complete the damage model is, you'll be a little more allergic to lead. So use your advanced sensors and defense systems to spot the threats early. Just like the more tanky healers, don't try and tank unless you absolutely have to. Stay out of range and sight of threats. And if you can't do that, stay fast. However, if you're up against the tactical DCS BTR-82 and such with their super sniper AI, they will murder you with their larger 30mm cannons. So you'll need to have an advantage like having night sights when they don't, or getting closer, or spraying a ludicrous amount of ammo, or you sneak up on them. And this is where you can use the Huey and Mi-8 door gunner tactics. Get fast and behind a solid ridge line, flying perpendicular, where their nasty guns aren't tracking you and leading you through maybe a thin, dispersed ridge of tree line. Then briefly bump up, have the co-pilot gunner fire the cannon sideways while you keep up the speed. And then drop down again and change course to help dodge the leading return fire. Some of that return fire might have really of a high velocity, so don't play around too long before dipping back into cover. And if you're circling back to review the damage, 
or take another strafe, do it from a different angle so the turrets aren't already pointing at you when you pop up. If you can't get a sneak peek on the heavy gun IFVs and ZU-23s, then just hellfire them. You'll probably use them more often low ball, like vehicle shots most of the time, range, designate, fire. They raise tanks from 8Ks, easy, simple, clean fun. If you don't have, say, a JTAC, lazing for you, with lock on after launch, you'll need to get the skills to pop up, so you're not exposing yourself too early, but also have enough terminal guidance for the missile to hit. As for bud lazing, I don't see this happening too often in standard DCS missions. You see tank, you hellfire tank. You give coordinates of a bunker to a jet, and the jet can probably laze for itself with the bird's eye view. What I am absolutely looking forward to is the 64's ability to be more of an information scout and commander for the other helos. While some of the helos have good magnification, the patchy sensors will be straight up the best on all fronts. Better zoom, flare, and the coordinates are displayed to you a little faster of your toilet. Before helos only had either radar warning receiver or laser warning receiver and would benefit flying together to complement the shortfalls. Sometime after early access, the Apache will have all the defensive systems rolled into one. So you can be the early warning. They need to go evasive and go low. Plus, if you're lucky, you have another human player that can use one of those fire radios to share coordinates while you fly or spot other targets. Which leads into the domain of the night. It's yours. If the target aren't as night capable as you, then you can easily get close enough for cannons on threatening things. But you might also be the best player to send information to less night capable units in terms of strike targets, or being the guy to provide illumination rounds over something you want other players to take out or land at. As the pilot or backseater, you're doing similar things that you would have done in the other helos. If you've trimmed out and you're not doing navigation or radios, for the most part, once you're in the threat era, you'll probably be looking at the canopy looking for threats, either with your Mark 1 eyeball or with a pinvis projected to your eye head so you can see the flare specifically at night probably. The front seater should probably be scanning using the helmet like you might with a shark. Just of course you've got the helmet display up front of you instead of just a screen. And then zooming once you spot something. Your sensors have a wider range of movement than the shark and the hind, which makes it easier for you to fly orbits or figures of eight while observing the area, rather than needing to circle in a side slip, stay and hover, or orbit and lose the target every time. Other tactics, like just keeping up your speed or how to do pop up attacks, they should be more obvious and easily translatable. But that about concludes my quick summary of things that you can adopt from the other DCS helos into your Apache flight, or appreciate the differences between the systems and the eras. This is Volk. Have fun.